right. Welcome everybody to 52 Living Ideas. Uh, today is a very odd meetup. It's about, it's, you know, I've, I've been studying principles uh, pretty much all my life, but um, it's always been challenging for me because my mind is very curious and I have tremendous confidence in my creative ability. So I'm continuously trying to take in new things and I don't think I do a, as good a job of, con, you know, kind of mastering principles and kind of building it into my life. I do some of it. I try. I always have had this little diagrams which summarize every principle that I really care about. Um, and I've done that for, for, for over you know, a couple of decades. But... Um, Still, I think there is a lot more that I need to learn about principles and how they work and what you do with them. So um, I do these meetups to learn. Uh, so, you know, this is amazing group of people who keep coming back. So what I want to do is I want to engage everybody in a dialogue about principles. Um, so what we will do. So firstly, I'm, I'll talk uh, this. I'm giving a short uh, introduction here. Principles are basically general truths, you know, general uh, truths and guide to action that are foundations of your action. You know, these are like your go-to things. Um, and they are general in the sense that they are not like, okay, it's not, you do not eat a grape with this. No, 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 that's, that's too, too low level. We are talking about high level principles to guide our action. And because the world is very complex, arriving at good principles is a very powerful way of living your life and also of interacting with people. So that's what, you know, that's what principles can do for us. So this is an exploration of principles. And what I want to do is I'm trying out this mode of, you know, crowdsourcing. So I want to you know, each of you, I have a lot of respect for, you know, most of you are regulars, some of people are new, uh, but most of you are regulars and I have a lot of respect for you folks. So I want to understand how you think about this. So I'm going to, instead of having you make a presentation for two to five minutes, I'm going to interview you. I'm going to ask you three questions, very simple questions. One is what principles do you live by? Second, is how did you come by them? What's your story about coming by them? And third, look into the future. You know, what do you need to do with principles? You know, do you need to learn new principles? Master, kind of learn how to apply them, uh, or you're all set? How do you see you and principles in the future? So, one is about the present. What principles do you live by? Second is about the past. How did you get there? And third is about future. So I'm going to go ahead and ask these two que questions, but I want uh, volunteers. Um, I don't want to spring this. I know all of you are comfortable talking, but um, I want uh, I want to go to start it in the order in which people would like to start. So who would like to uh, be the first one to be interviewed on this? I'm going to ask you just three questions. What principles you live by? Second, and it will be all maybe between two to five minutes, very short, and we'll go to the next person. And the purpose is that we, after we go through everybody, we're going to go ahead and try to see patterns, okay? So try to keep track of, you know, I would recommend a very, you know, high-tech device which I use. It's paper and pencil. It was, it was invented very recently, only about four to 5,000 5, years ago. And it's a wondrous device. And it does wonders for your mind. You know, it allows you in a very flexible way to keep track of all ideas. So what we are trying to do here is to keep track of all the ideas, what people are saying, and we're looking for patterns in them. Um, and hopefully all of us will learn something about, um, about what principles are, how you use them, what are the issues involved. We'll hopefully learn about some principles which we can examine and maybe integrate into our lives. 
All right, so that's what we are going to do. So it's going to be Joe, Jyoti, and Sharon first. And folks, uh, you can continue to line up uh, for for talking about how about your take on principles uh, by typing exclamation mark. All right, uh, Joe. Uh, so Joe, what principles do you live by? Um, I live by stoic principles and I've always kind of lived by stoic principles, even though I wouldn't necessarily have called them stoic at one particular moment in time. Uh, and, <clears throat> you know, that was, it was a process, something that even growing up, um, you know, there were certain actions that I would not do, you know, that, that were seen in aligned with justice. And this has been a process that has been ongoing for me, uh, as well as what I realized in my life experiences and the reasons I live towards these, uh, these uh, virtues or values is primarily um, because I've never regretted actually you know, doing the right thing. That's first and foremost. But I've always... Uh, been able to, you know, realize in my in my times that were I've been in very deep and dark moments, that I still had my actions, and that is a really important thing. Is that so? Values and principles drive actions, mm -hmm. and so that's a really important. Even in systems thinking, that's true. You know, your principles drive your actions, and your actions impact your principles. So you know, th there's that top-down, bottom-up approach. Um, so, and uh, what was the third question? I'm sorry. That was how I arrived is the idea that sure. I never, you know, sure. the so the question is, uh, looking forward, right. what do you think you need to do with principles? What, what's, I mean, when you think of principles and the rest of your life, what, what, what do you see? What do you need to do? You know, you, you, you constantly need to measure yourself against those principles. And I think that that's, you know, where things like journaling and understanding yourself and becoming more self-aware and under the human experience, having a process to do that is critical because otherwise, you know, you may end up as we have been talking about just drifting. Um, so I think that that's the most important thing going forward is that in life's experiences, you get some trials and errors, right? You, you start to also have a better context as to why you're doing these things you know, why it's so important not to lie, you know, why it's so important to be, um, you know, in a, a, a pursuing meaningful things, you know, and that in, that in, and that includes other people. So stoic principles, obviously, you know, we're all social creatures. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's where I approach well, my philosophy, and, and it's a philosophy of life. Now, there are things that we can go into that we need within that process. And, you know, yeah, no, but, right uh, now, yeah. we're just talking at a, at a very high level. So that's, this is perfect. And I think the question of why is a very powerful question. Because yeah. what happens is that if, even when you ask it to your fundamental principles, you understand something about the nature of yourself, the world, society, and maybe you see interconnections between principles that you did not see before. So wonderful. Yeah, I, and really quickly, and, and I'd come from, and I, as I had mentioned previously in, in, in other sessions, from a very dogmatic approach where you just did it and you didn't ask why. Mm -hmm. And so now you understand the why. And that makes it all, that makes all the difference because it makes it a lot easier to do the right thing other than you're just doing because as a, as a way of, uh, you know, being or not being in a way. So anyway, I'll leave it at there. I don't want to take up everybody's Thank time. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, next up is uh, Sharon, Jyoti, Brian, and Francoise. Sharon, go ahead. So the question is, what principles do you live by? And uh, if you need to leave it- Oh, at now I'm unmuted. Okay. Yeah, and if you need to leave at any point, just uh, go ahead and leave, okay? Yeah, yeah, thanks. I'm go just ahead. keeping my eye back. Uh, yes, well, one of, the, one of the important principles, I I do not believe that good things necessarily happen because, or bad things because of my behavior. There, there, there's something out there that, that's way beyond me. So, but I do have this principle that I cannot hope for good things to happen to me from the universe 
unless I freely offer good things to the universe. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I have to do good for other people without expecting any direct return. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get indirect return, but there's no guarantee. So that, that, that's one very strong principle. Mm -hmm. Another is that everyone has wonderful things in their life and everyone has terrible things in their life. And where you choose to put your focus determines how happy you'll be. And that's enabled me to uh, endure all sorts of adversity. Um, there are probably, there are some, uh, some other uh, principles that, now it came, from, I, I think it came from a young age because when I was about eight years old, I made up this poem Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Scorn the latter and pray for the first. Mm -hmm. Which really, I mean, yeah, I was eight or 10 years old mm -hmm. and I really had, had lived to that, uh, at dealing with whatever happens. Um, uh, one book that helped me a lot when I was 18 years old, my father had his first heart attack and you know, which was quite difficult for me. I read the Dale Carnegie book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Mm -hmm. And that really helped a lot uh, in, in uh, dealing with things. Another principle is I never act on my feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of my feelings. I understand them. Uh, but I always, I, uh, I try to act what's in my best interest, mm -hmm. regardless of my feelings. And that's a very, very successful way of living. I, I have been, being a good actor in life is vital to success. Um, I, it's just the opposite of wearing your, your feelings on your sleeve, you know, and that, that's helped me I, I gain all sorts of <laughs> things by not acting the way I really feel, but being fully aware of it. Consequently, I believe that I, never am moody, never, because I'm, I'm fully aware of my feelings. I understand why I feel a certain way and I don't act on that basis. So I'm never moody. I, I, I can be sad, I can be upset, but, I'm, uh, but I, I always know why. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Sharon. So um, that, that was great. Um, both kind of, you know, putting the good out if you want good, choosing your focus and not acting blindly on your feelings. Um, the, what, what do you see looking forward? What do you think you need to do with principles? Do you think that you have all the principles that you need? Um, what, what do you need to do? Well, I, I, I'm pretty happy. I mean, I'm, I'm happy despite adversity. What is all sorts, I mean, frankly, look, my mother-in-law is 91. We're gonna be facing something, you mm -hmm. know, in the next, who knows when. It could be rather imminent. And actually my focus is to try to help my husband deal with his anticipatory grief because he's, he's going through that. I have, I, now this is part of stoicism, which I, I believe I've been living my whole life. I have, I have trouble with grief. This is, this is one of my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in grief. I believe in sadness, mm -hmm. but to me, people who ha have grief is because they think of what they have regrets, what I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have told them this. I don't, uh, if, you, if you do all you can possibly do, it. oh, that, that's another principle. If everything, if I've done everything that is reasonable within my power to do to, to fix a situation and it doesn't go my way, whatever, I am at peace when I know I've done all I possibly can. And, and that, that relates to, to that as well. I, I, I have to be a little more, um, I don't know if empathetic is the word, but I, I, since I don't have grief so much, sadness, yes, but not grief, because mm -hmm. I try to live my life with no regrets in terms of how I treat people, important people in my life. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, think, I think what you're saying actually integrates very well with the stoic principles. Uh, as well. So uh, I'm going to go back to Joe for a second. Joe, uh, you talked about stoic principles. Can you very briefly in a minute or so uh, tell people, some of them, some people may not be familiar with stoicism. So if you want to say, what are, what are stoic principles in a minute? Very briefly, what, what are they? 
Well, I mean, they're based on the cardinal virtues, right? Justice, temperance, courage, and uh, prudence, or uh, uh, wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, the idea basically is, is that you have these principles that you're are gearing how you interact with others. So in the sense of courage, if you have your fears, how you overcome those fears, and that's you know, some of the principles that actually just were, were talked about were, um, uh, you know, actually Sharon had talked about is that, you know, having the courage to face some of the things that she had faced at 18 years old and, you know, to, to, um, and, and currently, and understanding that we manage ourselves in accordance with nature with others. So the idea of principles of justice, and that comes back to not lying. Mm -hmm. And there's also managing our passions. So managing our passions within that means not getting too high or too low and then and, and kind of remaining tranquil and, and interacting with everybody in an equi equitable way. Um, and that allows you to not look past others. Mm -hmm. So it really determines your interactions with others. So that's how I usually think about Stoic principles guiding my life mm -hmm. is that, you know, there's there's how they inter how I interact with others, how I interact with myself. And, and then also, uh, there, there are a lot of, also there are a lot of, uh, psychological things there too. So, uh, and I really appreciate the principles of no guarantees, mm -hmm. um, because you know, that, that we're not tied to outcomes. That's another, very, it's a stoic principle as well that Sharon had just spoken about. So, uh, you know, I very much appreciate, uh, what she just added. So that's how I, I, articulate what uh, Stoic principles are. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ucho. Uh, next up is going to be Jyoti, Brian, Shadaya, and Dave. Jyoti, go ahead. Okay. It's a very complicated question about the principles. Because principles, I keep modifying them, but there are certain principles I wouldn't move from. For instance, I, I'm going to steal from you, Shikan, about being truthful. But I will tell you later on why I can stay truthful. Stay humble, stay respectful, and listen to others who are in pain. Be empathetic. So th uh, that's what I think are the crucial points in having my principles uh, in front of me all the time. I may, might deviate here and there according to the situation, but these ingredients don't change. They will mm -hmm. always stay there. Mm -hmm. And very importantly, I think it's the thing that I'm very proud of myself is the commitment. If I gave you a word that I can do something for you, I'll stick by it. Mm -hmm. And if I can do it, I will tell you right from the get go, this might be a difficult from a thing for me. I may not be able to do it. So please go ahead and find somebody else to do it for you. Because I don't want to leave anybody at, in lurch when I'm not able to do it. I'm not going to be fake with you. I'm going to let you know right from the, from the start that that's how I am and that's the way it is going to be. So uh, also when you are in intimate relationship and you do care for somebody, you got to care 100%. You have to be very faithful and you have to let the person know that that person can, uh, that they can depend on me. It's more or less like a commitment. So this is what my principles are basically. Now, where did I get them from? My upbringing, mostly my grooming, how I was groomed as a child. I saw my parents um, very, very humble, very respectful. They enjoyed being with other people. They interacted with them uh, with a lot of respect. And that kind mm -hmm. of, and I think it's in my DNA. I'm just a humble person mm -hmm. by nature. Mm -hmm. So that I didn't have to put an effort in it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where it's coming from. Uh, also maybe it's my uh, neurology that mm -hmm. eventually I come back to what I am. Mm -hmm. So that's basically where I'm coming from. And uh, what is the last question? Last, uh, uh, where, where do you see in the future? Uh, when you look at the future. Right. Okay. The future. <laughs> I'm the kind of person 
I don't worry about the future because whatever I had I had in mind in the, for the future, it didn't pan out that way. However, it didn't pan out badly either. A lot of things fell in my lap. And I said, wow, I didn't think I was going in that direction, but what I have now is great. I can live with it. So, uh, and they're good things. And despite all the losses I've had in my life, despite being a mother of children who were, uh, who were uh, in two cultures, uh, with all that was going on, I never worried about the future. I did the work. I did the right hard work in the right direction. And I said, future will take care of me. Now, coming back to uh, the truth, I will tell you that truthfully. Mm-hmm. What I've learned in my life is my truth is my truth. It's not everybody's truth. And I am not going to be um, putting pressure on other people to go by my truth. Because after living in this culture for almost 48, uh, 50 years, I'm realizing people look at things differently. And they have a right to not look at things the way I look at it. I am a moral, very moral person. Again, you know, going into these thinking groups and uh, meeting uh, very nice people, educated people, I realize they're nice people, but their uh, morality, laws of morality are different than mine. So I have to kind of back off and I, I'm not going to be very argumentative. That I have, uh, have found uh, that about myself because you can become very hard-nosed in your argument and lose a lot of good things that people have to offer. So that's where I'm going in the future. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is going to be uh, Brian. Brian, go ahead. Okay, um, I, I, it's, uh, it comes in two parts for me. I, I've got a, um, a, a list of principles that I, I know I try to live my life by. Um, I also got various sort of little sayings that I keep in mind from time to time um, to, to help me get through things. Um, things like the, the phrase which begins, all will be well and all shall be well, that, that kind of thing. Um, my basic principles, I think, were given to me by my father um, when I was very, very young. My, my father died when I was nine, and he knew he was going to die, I think, for a long time. Uh, he tried to teach me things that he'd lived his life by, and that his father had also lived his life by. And they're the main things that I sort of, I would write down now as my main principles. The main being sorry the main one being sort of honesty to everyone in all things all of the time but there are other others the smaller ones things like failure to me is only something that happens when you fail to learn from the previous lesson um things like i never stop learning i will never stop learning in in my entire life i assume responsibility for everything anything that i do so it, it's those kind of things that I have in my principles. Um, another one sort of let curiosity guide me in everything. I, I follow those as much as I can. I think uh, when my father died, my mother tried to keep that um, education process going. And that's why I remember them so well now. But there was a time in my early adult life where I, I think I forgot all of them. I forgot everything. And I went through a... Uh, a hard time um, until I was out of it in my 20s when I started developing this kind of thinking again. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And what, what, how do you see the future in terms of principles? Um, interestingly, for the past uh, couple of years, I've, I've been following um, Stoicism as well. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing I get out from that now is the phrase memento mori which you just remember you're going to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, I to live your life according to that. Um, I had quite a serious illness a couple of years ago, um, which is, I think, has, is going to limit my life. I don't know how long. Doctors don't seem to know how long. Um, but for that, I don't really plan too much for the future at the moment. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, next up is going to be Francoise, Shadaya, Dave, 
Jonathan and Nick. Francoise, go ahead. Hi, so it, it, I love the subject because I must say that I'm, I'm a person of uh, strong principles, you know, from, from very early, and I can see those principles coming very strongly uh, at different time of my life. And there's so much part of me that they are like monitored by system one. And, and for instance, I started as a kid to be very, you could say stubborn, but it's better to say persistent. And as a principal, I don't give up. So by being persistent since the year, year, younger age, I've kept on doing what I wanted to do, you know, and nobody could make me deviate from, from where I wanted to go. So that I think was already hardwired. You know, I was born persistent. And then education and culture made, made uh, um, gave me other principles. Like my parents, especially my father, taught me to be organized. The, they were noticed in the home, you know, everything in its place and uh, uh, a place for everything and everything in its place. So it was like an order to, to put things in order, which stayed with me. And I like things when they're very well ordered. Um, then from school, you know, we had uh, philosophy in school. And when I learned about Socrates, it stayed with me that I have to know myself. By knowing myself, I can learn about others and carry my knowledge, you know, to, to be more connected with people, starting by knowing myself. So those stayed with me. Culturally, you know, in France, you have that motto, liberté, égalité, fraternité. So mm -hmm. my sense of freedom come and, and the, the, the sense of, of sociology, I think is part of the culture. And that motto is, is uh, nearly like brainwashing. You know, I want to be free, and especially after living in the 60s, you know, freedom and Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir, and it gives you those principles where, you know, your freedom stops where someone else's freedom starts. You, you can be free as long as you don't bother anyone else. So, and nobody should tell you what to do. You know, I'm very much against all kinds of dogma because people are free to choose. So it, it's really, all, all that is, is, uh, is in system one. Mm -hmm. And later on, and it helped me to, to really better my life, was the understanding and the practice of integrity. Because I think integrity is impossible to, be, to have integrity 100% of the time. Nobody is capable of it. But if you have uh, your, your thought, your word and your action into a wheel and between what you think, what you uh, speak and what you do, it should be in harmony. And when it's not, you can catch up and apologize and, and realize it and, uh, you know, uh, realize that you, you, ha you had a lack of integrity. You know, because there's always some, sometimes it breaks and you can't help it. You know, you know, you're human mm -hmm. and, and your humanity doesn't allow you to be always, uh, to have integrity. But it's not missing it, which is important. It's just recognize it yet that you failed. So catching up with your integrity is extremely important. Um, and then I fully agree with the, the, the Stoic principles, but I would add a little bit of Epicureanism because um, what you talk about the future, you know, I think when, when you live by your principle, and for me, I wanted a life I love. By loving my life, I feel happy. And what I want for the future is to share it, you know, to share that wisdom with others and, and give away what I've learned, you know, because. Um, at my age, I can only give it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Francoise, you've been doing that uh, in the past few minutes. And in, in the past four years that uh, I've known you, you've been coming to my meetup. So it's uh, an honor. honor. Thank you. Uh, next up is Shadaya, Dave, Jonathan, and Nick. Hi, uh, my name is Shadaya. You might not see the recording. I mean, you see my face, but this is me. Uh, okay, so I'm 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 new to your group, but I decided to express. I, I, I'm just going to answer the questions that that were provided for me to Please. answer. Uh, during the president, like most of the times, I I 
most of the times in, in, in face of adversity, especially with other individuals, I choose to um, try to do to try to have as much integrity as possible. And I also try to have as much strength as possible. Uh, I live by principles to never to not to leave others behind, especially from the experiences that I've learned um, being around family members who have like being around family members and thinking about other individuals who who may have been in my life. And, and I was taught to just like whatever I experienced within my family would teach me a lot about how to treat other people. So um, one thing, another thing I like to do is just like I if if someone is in trouble, like not to leave them just because. That I don't like them, you know, like, like, it's not about who I like, it's about what's the right thing to do. And to and to leave someone behind is another way. It, it's just, it's just, it's just, it just takes to the stomach, like, just, to, and, and also spirituality is very wrong to just like leave someone after like, just because I don't like them. Uh, the other, the other principles that I do live by, I do like stoicism truthfully. Uh, it, it, it's very nice to have to, to deal with justice and not have to take um, not having to take like uh, uh, accountants for accountability for my own actions when I do help or save somebody or do something to someone. I'm not the type to like try as I have learned in college. I'm not the type to try to take that, try to take that, uh, take take like the attention. Like I'm not looking for attention. I'm looking to make sure that I do what was on my mind and my intention of of what I wanted to do. And on to, on, on another thing. It's like I try to have good intentions with as many individuals as I can. So um, that's another uh, principle I live by. The way I received, the way I had, uh, the way I had come up with with these with these few things, is that I is that it's based on the experience that I've had with my family members and based on the experience that I have with individuals outside, and um, and and uh, and going to college, and uh, asking for advice whenever I could. Like just like and and listening to my my elders and my mother's family and my father's family about like what I should be on what I should be doing with uh on what I should be doing with uh with with, with my life mm -hmm. and in the future like I just plan to make sure that I do keep these traits and I I try to I try my best not to lose these traits and uh to not lose these traits and to make sure that I do develop better, like better intelligence level and just like improve on like being myself, but also like being a better me without having to take from other individuals and without having to like be like other individuals all the time. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's my, those are my questions answered. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shade. I really appreciate it yeah, uh, and, and welcome. Uh, next up is going to be Dave, Jonathan, Nick and Kevin. Dave, go ahead. Uh, Dave, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, details, schmeetails. Uh, thank you, Shikant. This is certainly an interesting meetup. I know we've done a few before where people have told their stories. Um, so I haven't had a chance to uh, write notes out and I don't know if you want the one hour, the two hour, three hour version. No, but, I, I, I want a, a three minute version. Okay. <laughs> but what I would talk about is my family. Uh, my father, I think is where I got my values from. Uh, both my parents were school teachers. Uh, my father taught phys ed in a junior high on the wrong side of the tracks, as we would say in the depressed area. The kids there were approximately one third black, one third Latino, and one third poor white. Um, and one of my earliest memories, I was a little kid uh, down in the basement and we had a ping pong table. And sitting around on this ping pong table was all these big kids I'd never seen before. And they were being served chili that my mother had cooked. And I realized, uh, you know, my dad was football coach in the fall, basketball in the winter, and a track in the spring that they'd won the city championship. And I'm sure my dad said something about if you know, if you win the city championship, I'll treat you to a chili dinner. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting thing was uh, the humility. There were no trophies in our house. And I, I didn't even hear about the championships until later. It was nothing my dad bragged about 
although we went to every high school game so we could watch his kids that he coached uh, play in high school. Um, and the interesting thing is uh, a couple other events. Uh, about 20 years ago, uh, my dad died in 2001, but my sister was back there checking on my parents. And the alumni, the black kids that had gone to this junior high were getting together for alumni dinner in a nice restaurant in the nice side of town, ironically. And uh, so my, I don't know if they contacted my sister or she found out about it, but she took my dad over to this reunion and they had a good time talking to Coach Dittimore about the good old days and this, that, and the other. Um, and the other thing I remember uh, when I was young, probably, probably a teenager, uh, my dad uh, was teaching another junior high. Actually, he was principal of another junior high on the wrong side of the river, another depressed area. It had been flooded in 1951. And so I think we had, you know, four or five boys in the back seat of the car. And one kid said, as we were driving to Kansas City, gosh, this is the first time I've been across the bridge to the other side of the river. Wow. Uh, so I, you know, to me, his whole life was helping, you know, these depressed kids. And the ironic thing was at his funeral, uh, two kids came from the, the first junior high. Uh, one was this big brawly guy who I'm sure had been the star. The other guy was just a normal, normal Joe. And when he got up to speak, he said, Mr. Dinamore didn't teach us to hate the kids from the other side of town. But he taught us how to beat them. So I thought that was a kind thing to say. But so uh, even though I've had a good career and you know, engineering job and have worked directly with uh, the homeless and things like that, I, I am so frustrated to see beggars at every street corner uh, see homeless tents around our city in Seattle, uh, finding out that 25% of our children are hungry in the richest country in the world. It blows my mind. So this is why I get in politics, although I will stay away from politics now, that we have to do things to, to make this a better world. But thanks for the opportunity, Shikant. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dave. I mean, what happens is that for each of us, there are kind of some individuals who make a very fundamental impact on, on our lives. And for many, many of us, those people actually personify the principles. So the principles come to us in, in that form. We, we learn from them. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me see. Next up is Jonathan. John, go ahead. Thanks, Ricard. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my, I sort of started acquiring principles, I don't really think until I was really in my 20s. Um, I grew up, I sort of, uh, the way I was raised, I guess you would say that some people have parents that sort of instill principles in them and, uh, you know, give them lessons. And I feel like I got more of it through osmosis. And so I had to sort of start learning principles the hard way uh and uh eventually it sort of dawned on me that i i better start coming up with principles and guiding myself because uh which is sort of my first principle uh that i'll share which is that if you don't really write your own story others will write it for you mm -hmm. um, or the system will write it for you so if you don't choose your own path a path will be chosen for you. So you might as well try to, to be determinate about what you're choosing. Um, and so I've, I feel like I've acquired a number of principles and it's always changing. And I, I see them as like little, it's almost like a compass, you know, like little compasses or little tools to help navigate. Uh, and I'll, I'll share a couple of them uh, so one thing I've learned is that um, how you feel is innately true and you should pay attention to it. So you can be wrong about ideas, you can be wrong about philosophies, politicians, systems of government, religions, um, but how you feel is always true. 
and no one can tell you otherwise. So that's always something you can tap into to find truth. Um, yet uh, another principle, uh, which I you know actually learned from somebody I worked with when we were dealing with like a difficult boss, he said, you can't reason with unreasonable people, <laughs> which I found very valuable because I feel like a lot of the tri trouble is sometimes you're trying to reason with unreasonable people. However, uh, this brings me to my third principle, which I also think is very profound, is that everyone can teach you something, everyone, even the unreasonable people, uh, because everyone has something that's innately true, which is how they feel. So we're all different sentient beings. We all have experiences and worldviews and we're all, there's no way I can get inside someone else's head. And oftentimes when we see someone, we're like, why is that crazy person doing that <laughs> or saying that thing? It's because uh, their reality, their senses, their experiences are making this feeling of truth for them that is true. Every bit as true as yours. And so you can even learn something from somebody who is crazy or in your view, crazy. Uh, and so the, I guess those are um, a few of the, the fundamental ones. Um, and I guess this, the last principle I'll share is that uh, this one is pretty, I found to be pretty profound um, for myself and that I often forget about, but I try to remind myself because it applies to a lot of things, which is that um, the world is the way it is and it's not the way I want it to be. Um, so I can't really change the way the world works, but I can enjoy the exploring uh, the various mechanisms by which it does. So I can become curious about it. And so those are some Wonderful. principles that I've acquired along the way uh, that may or may not be true. I don't know. The final principle is if, if my principles need improving <laughs> and mm -hmm. I learn better ones, I should be humble and seek to change them. So thanks. thanks Wonderful. Much. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, next up is Kevin. Uh, sorry, Nick, Kevin, and Paul. Nick. Hi, thank you. And it's been uh, great to just hear from everyone so far with all, all these uh, great, great thoughts. So uh, yeah, I just want to share a little bit of uh, just kind of what I've thought. And there were definitely a number of principles and kind of values that I think of, I've learned just through family and friends and everything just growing up. And, uh, but I think more, more recently, uh, I've, when I read Ray Dalio's principles, I kind of start to think about the things I live by in kind of a more explicit form. And uh, I've always been just a very systems thinker of an, kind of an engineering background. So kind of these principles and values, I kind of just view as heuristics to help guide decision-making. So, uh, you know, there's a number of ones that other things that are kind of these uncompromising kind of values and beliefs that I have uh, just in terms of importance of family and helping others and giving back. But I, I had kind of want to spin into a few different principles I live by that I think are a little bit more, uh, yeah, like a little bit more unique, I guess, to how I think and kind of in, just in, in view this. So, uh, you know, the first one I'll share is just, I've always believed in trusting the process and that the outcome will will follow. So just be very, very process oriented whenever I do. So uh, just that allows, a lot of times if you're focused too much on results, I find you end up kind of questioning the process and you're, you kind of are too focused on just the outcome, but there's many things in life that take time to actually get the results. So if you're if you're too focused on you know again whether it's you're dieting or or doing or building a, a hobbies or a skill or anything like that, if you're too focused on on seeing some external goal or something else that someone else has seen versus what you know is going to get you there, uh, you then you then that can just kind of it can like lead you astray I guess and just cause you to give up. So that'd be one. Another one that I would say I live by is just the kind of the belief that you have the power to create your own luck. And Steve Jobs had called this in his book, the whole reality distortion field where, um, which kind of goes along with the creating your own luck where basically you can kind of will things into existence just and kind of, and you know, just being in the right place at the right time doesn't really exist. It's kind of, you're, you're putting yourself in that, in that spot. And so part of this is just a mentality and, and to mentality, I'd say to get, to, to achieve like what you want, I guess. And that even if there are certain truths or, or certain principles that might not necessarily be kind of true in a universal, in a, true in a universal sense, but they're, they're truthful in that if you live by, it's, it's the right approach. It's kind of the whole deterministic argument where if you 
believe that the universe is deterministic, it doesn't necessarily make, doesn't mean you should live as if it is deterministic because that doesn't actually help, help you actually live your life. Uh, another thing is just questioning the status quo and not taking things at face value and that there's a lot that we have to learn and the ability to grow kind of as individuals and as a society is kind of questioning. And there's obviously the, the whole liberal conservative balance of, of the, the things that have been established and, you know, they're working. There's a lot of deep thought and kind of deep evolution that's gone into that. So you have to balance just changing what what is existing and dealing with the second, third order consequences uh, with, you know, maybe, there, maybe there's a better way to do things. Um, just, yeah, just a couple of just two or three more. Uh, just one is uh, following, uh, when to really get to know someone, you really have to follow their actions, not their words. So I've been it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, for that one. Uh, another one is you can't always control the situation, but you can control how you respond. So this could be just in the, the learning sense where, you know, if something goes wrong, you lose, use it a learning opportunity and I forget if someone else had said something along the lines too that if uh, if you if something goes wrong in a trip, say that flight is delayed or something like that, then you you can use that as just you know not a list of learning opportunity, but just as a kind of a cool experience or something just to to it makes life more memorable, I guess, and just kind of the chaos of life. Mm -hmm. uh, and then lastly, just Jordan Peterson's rule number eight, I think, is obviously very truthful is the tell the truth or at least don't lie and just making sure you're very honest with yourself and with others throughout throughout your life. Nick, that was that was excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Where, where do you see um, when you look into your future? What do you see? What, what will you do with principles? Yeah, so I definitely want to try to make some of these a little more explicit since just when I saw the prompt for today, I was trying to pretty much reverse engineer because a lot of these things are not, they could become so deeply ingrained that you, that's kind of how you view the world. So they're, they're obvious to you, but they not be obvious to others. So part of it's making it more explicit kind of as Dalio did in his principles book. And then just that really allows you to just guide your decision-making um, you're just guiding how you see and interpret the world and, and making sure that kind of you're always, whenever you're facing a challenging decision or just like, or, or just navigating other, other of life's challenges, you, uh, you're kind of guiding that decision-making through that framework. Excellent. And just, so just taking what other people are, here, are saying to, to, and just integrating it to my own kind of worldview. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, Glad to, glad to see you back. Uh, next up is Kevin, followed by Paul. Kevin? Uh, thank you, Srinika, and thank you others for uh, uh, sharing. Uh, uh, my principle, I would say, I, I live with, uh, it's like conflict. My mom is uh, uh, believes Buddhism. Uh, she accepted, the, she once told me, like, uh, accept those negative, just don't be disappointed, or find back. And uh, nobody can defeat you, or you just stick your belief. Another side, my dad believes science. My dad said, "Let's see. You see, your mom friend is Buddhism. You see, something doing is not right. Not follow those virtual rules. So they, I grew up like during those conflict. Mm -hmm. It's my own culture. I live in China. Here's uh, now." Uh, 20 years I live in Canada, and now the Western culture open up. So always conflict and always, you know, I try self-awareness and self-learning. Then I keep this question myself, let's say ask normally inner, you know, answer on myself, then learn from others. So this kind of um, situation. And uh, for look forward, I find words could be bring you know words of wisdom also words have some limita limitation let's see the truth we believe we understand the different uh, uh view from other side like yesterday we have a set of set off for the prisoner it could be go to another side it's still a set of a set of. it's endless endless to learning and grow ourselves Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Uh, next up is Paul. Paul? Okay. Main principle of my life, to live in truth 
and to see the truth. Because I never, I, uh, you know, in my pretty long life, I never had one hour of university, humanitarian ed education, and basically I didn't have any university education. So that's why I realized very early in my life that system is everything. System of studying, system of working, system of life. Board is not as complex as many people are afraid uh, to, um, uh, um, as many people are afraid of complex world. What is not as complex? If you have system, it's not complex. For me, the main principle is our Judeo-Christian social evolution system and Judeo-Christian principles brought the quality of life which we have uh, right now, the prosperity which we have right now, brought us the enlightenment, brought us our freedoms, and brought us our democracy. And my main principle is um, to live and to work and to fight. So for me, for whole humanity, we can protect that uh, those freedoms for, for everybody and forever. Wonderful. Uh, so Paul, um, how did you come to these principles? But, but because I was actually, I think that because I didn't have proper teacher, that I had to look for them on my own. And because I was, I looked for them on my own. I had to, I had to compare many different schools, many different principles, and um, uh, and I come up with the with the best system which I could come up with. So anybody who would go truthfully through process what I went through has to end up like I did. There is no other way. There, Stoicism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, none of those ism will do it. You have to study. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, folks, this has been, this is amazing. So what I want to do, I mean, I'm actually quite, quite odd by everything that has been put on the table. So what I want to do now is I think the right thing to do is to go to the breakout rooms to discuss this amongst ourselves, and then let's come back and then look at this uh, issue as a whole. All right, I'm starting the breakout rooms now. Looks like everybody is back. Good. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, folks. All right, so now we're going to talk about our takeaways. Um, what, what I want to do is I want to give a chance for people. So firstly, I want to say um, I have a meetup come. We have a meetup coming up at 2.30, which promises to be one of the best meetups we have ever done. It's on aesthetics. We have never done a meetup on aesthetics. So it's going to be on, uh, you know, aesthetics of romanticism. So that's what it's going to be about. And uh, that's going to be at 2.30. So we have some time. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go around and get everybody's takeaways from it. I'm going to give priority to people who have not spoken before. So they can, um, and if you have not spoken before, you can go ahead and take maybe two minutes to talk about what you got from it. And if you want to say anything about you and principles, you're welcome to do that. So it's going to be Sharon from Chicago, uh, Tova and Ronika. Sharon. Yes, thank you, Shurkan. I thought this was very interesting and I appreciate everybody who shared. It's wonderful to hear all the variety of principles and thoughts around those. And it's a lot of food for thought. So I don't really have a direct takeaway, but I was telling Shurkan, I left this small group a little bit early. Um, I didn't share, but mine are pretty basic, honesty, integrity, and, and uh, equality. Those would be kind of the binding principles for me. And I really came about those from, you know, watching other people make mistakes when I'm younger and seeing their consequences and then of course making my own mistakes. So thank you. This is a great topic, Shurkan, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, next up is Tova, Ronika and Kimberly. Hi everyone. Um, so my values were pretty much like, I don't know if it's like Nietzsche, Plato, everyone, uh, but that it would fall under the category of like living a life of goodness and virtue. So, you know, returning to that cave to bring others out of darkness. Unfortunately, it's so dark down there though. Yeah. Um, and the topic that we discussed was um, pretty much 
kind of like how certain ways in which we use that ideology change within relationships as the relationships themselves change. So, um, you know, a number of women in our group was, oh, sorry, you can't hear me. A number of women in our group um, basically said that, you know, as they watched their daughters getting older, um, they changed the way in which they like showed parts of themselves or like parts of parts of themselves to their children and like how at times they were ready to see that they were in fact another human being, not, you know, an, an all encompassing parent who knows right from wrong and is somehow, you know, this God entity and until a certain point in development. So it was fascinating. Um, everyone has like different rates and different pay, like paces for, um, I guess that transition and it happens at a different time for everyone, but just like how impactful that is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tova. Uh, next up is Ronika, Kimberly, Hi. and Mike. Ronika, go ahead. Hi, um, I am um, a retired service provider. So if I have to choose only one principle to live by, it would be do no harm. Mm -hmm. uh, it was interesting. <clears throat> to listen to uh, to what people said in the uh, in the private group, I was in the same group as Tova, so I might repeat some of the stuff that she said. But uh, we talked um, in part about family values and what do you pass to to your children. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ronika. Uh, next up is uh, Kimberly, Mike, and Nikos. Kimberly? Okay, yeah, so I was in the group with all the women. Did you do that on purpose? No, it's all <laughs> random. Is it's it? It's all random, yeah. It was interesting, I got online, I go like, there's a bunch of women, you know? But no, it, it turned out really good. Um, I was like one of the people that I was talking to Sharon a lot because her daughter's 25 and my daughter's 19 and I'm having to learn to let her go, you know, and oh. learn from her. Um, I think my principles, they got modeled by my mother, number one, but number two, um, I, I just, I just discovered stoicism this last year. And there's a group in the local area where I live. I live in Minnesota mm -hmm. and I'm on their meetup groups all the time. And it, it resonates so much with me, you know, it took me this many years to, to find it, but so those are kind of the principles I model. Wonderful. So, yeah. Uh, next up is, uh, Mike. Mike, uh, the gentleman from Magical Realism, I yield you three minutes. Three minutes. Uh, I'm not sure I need that much this time. I'm going to try to be a person of few words. Uh, my uh, principle, my uh, the model I live by, which has been confirmed by everything I heard tonight and includes all those by reference, is nothing in my life ever goes wrong. How did I arrive at, uh, at that? Uh, I arrived at from Ecclesiastes, from Poor Richard's Almanac, from this session today, from watching the debates between Trump and uh, Biden. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm reminded of a poem uh, from uh, uh, Robert Frost. We do this dance that we've been shown by everyone we've ever known. No until the dance becomes our own. Now, uh, things like um, uh, chained off of uh, nothing in my life ever goes wrong is, uh, uh, is Plato's allegory of the cave, which is the, what we see depends on our point of view. Chained off of that is the map is not the territory. Uh, so uh, our grasp of reality is not what we think it is. Chained off of that is another Plato statement, which we got from Socrates, that uh, we should be kinder than necessary because everyone we meet is fighting a fierce and awesome battle of which we know nothing. So uh, I can go back into deep into Ecclesiastes and uh, the Psalms, uh, and Peter Richard's Almanac, but I think everybody has borrowed some of that in, uh, in our previous hour of discussion, and I resonate with all of it. 
it's all chained off of uh, of uh, of that of what I think is my and from my point of view is all chained off of nothing in my life ever goes wrong. Wonderful. Thank you. And you yield the balance of your time. I yield the balance of my time. I do have something to say about aesthetics and I run later. She also. Oh, well, that, yeah, that one, that one we are going to do uh, at 2.30. Coming up. Next up is uh, Nikos, followed by Marco. Nikos? Yes. Um, I think my, after listening to all of these, um, I, I uh, kind of a step back thing I realized when listening to people is the importance of being able to articulate your principles uh, very concisely. I think the more concise, the better. Um, if you can summarize it to three, four or five words and then go on to explain it, I think it has more of a, more of a powerful impact. It's something I can remember. Um, at least something I noticed for myself. So, so that's um, that's something that I definitely need to improve on because there's things that are floating in my head that I can spit out if you ask me, but to be able to articulate it in a sentence or four words, that's a totally different level of really feeling your principle and getting it. Absolutely. Uh, so next up is going to be Marco, me, and then uh, everybody else who has spoken before. Uh, Marco. Um, yeah, I definitely, uh, I thought it was a great meetup. I uh, enjoyed um, all the, the input and I learned a lot from everyone that spoke. And um, and my probably my biggest takeaway for me personally is probably like not, um, not acting on feelings and to respond to what's uh, best for me. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, so, you know, Sharon was asking me, you know, what's my principles? Um, and there for a long time, I have used this one principle, which has been the most, most powerful principles that I know. And still it's the most powerful principle I, I, that I know. I learned it from Louis Sullivan. Um, it's form follows function. It's a principle I mean, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's it's kind of like in a category by itself for me, because I mean, his um, his autobiography is called Autobiography of an Idea. It's basically the story of how he came up with this principle and what it did for him afterwards. Um, I find that it's a principle. It's just one principle which I can bring to bear on any situation I'm in on any scale and it always produces stunning results for me. Um, it's simply saying, uh, it's very simple. It's what it's saying is that we are living beings. We're trying to live and all the structures that we build are built in order to make that life possible. So it is a way of asking yourself what a function is, what your function is in what you're trying to do at whatever scale whether it's in a conversation that you're having now or your life as such or society and then ask what is a structure that follows from that, that makes it possible. And I find that even when I've applied the same principle to it just a few moments ago or a year ago, bringing the same principle back on the same issue produces new results because what happens is that no matter how well you work to come up with forms, life is always changing. Contexts are always changing and the structures have to change with that. So it's a reminder to be in touch with life, with action and reworking all your structures um, accordingly. So for me, that is the most powerful principle that I have seen. Um, so folks, now it's the takeaways for the rest of the people. So I'm just going to call people in order. Sharon, you had raised, so let's try to keep it brief, maybe about a couple of minutes each so we can get everybody in. Um, Sharon, I don't know which Sharon typed, so I'm, uh, whichever Sharon typed exclamation mark. Hi, me. This one, this one. Yes, there was one important principle I forgot to mention. By the way, what you just talked about is saying, I get more, and I get new information 
I consider it and alter my alter my principles on the basis of new information. Being open to new information is, is extremely important. So that, that that's really good. What I what I forgot to mention is the concept of also um, uh, a phrase a rabbi uttered about two thousand years ago uh, by Gamzu Gamzu Latova, which means also this is for the good. When something what it appears to be bad happens, we cannot see the big picture where where it's going to lead. But if you think also this is for the good, but in ways that I can't possibly imagine or anticipate, I may have to go through grief and sadness, but good things can come out. So you, you can, it, it makes one more accept, it, easier to accept the adversities that happen. Also, this is for the good is a very good way to live. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Uh, who would like to share next? So let me see. It's uh, Francoise, Joe, and Brian. Um, I don't know. It seems to me that a lot of time we have more of a story than a real principle. So it's kind of, we look at principle on a retroactive way, you know, and, and we act through our principle automatically. But most of the time we don't even realize we, we act through those principles. So it's something which is behind the scene, dictating our action without really realizing that we obey to always to the same principles. Thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is that let, let me give you a couple of observations that I made while uh, during the initial, uh, you know, in initial presentations. Um, I mean, it's amazing. You know, it's an amazing group of people uh, talking about an amazing topic. Uh, you know, these are the things that we live by. So it's at the core of who we are. And firstly, I think it is a great credit to all of us that we can talk about this openly with each other and learn from each other. Um, secondly, I was amazed to see the variety of people and variety of approaches, how big the influence of family and parents is or specific influences we've had, um, how much work we ourselves have had to do, um, you know, what challenges, you know, what, what kind of adversities have done for people, um, how, what are the different ways in which people hold it? Like people like Francoise and um, Brian or Dave or Sharon have kind of integrated it into their lives and I can kind of see it in their personality itself. You know, that's just how they are. Uh, so it's like, I could not even think about asking them about the future, I said, why? I don't need to ask because they have kind of integrated everything and they are facing life with it and it allows them to do a whole variety of things. Um, so, so it's like different people have it in different stages um, of it. Like Nick is still kind of, uh, people who are a little younger are tr still trying to kind of work things out and they're, the principles are in flux, but some of you know some people like Nick, for example, he has a very kind of granular grasp of different things that happen and what kind of principles would work there. So I think the, it's it was fascinating to see the entire variety of approaches uh, to principles. You know, I was also very impressed with Paul, who was talking about how he learned everything on his own without a teacher. And that's a huge thing. Ultimately, that's what happens. You know, it's like you, whether you like it or not, you have to learn everything. You know, people can bring things to you, uh, but it is kind of your choice and you're saying yes to it. Um, so it was just, it's just amazing. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, amazing hearing everything and trying to see. So, so that, that's my, my takeaway. So next up is going to be Joe Brian and Dave. Joe? Um, really quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're talking about what is your function, is that the same as purpose? Uh, it is very close to purpose, um, but it is kind of function is kind of metaphysical thing, which is identified by the mind. Purpose, the concept of purpose is largely about your choice. Function is more respect full of 
what kind of situation, what your life is and what your life needs, and then the purpose which is based on it. So it is purpose which is based on deep connection with what is going on. So, so in that sense, it's that kind of a purpose. So it's a kind yeah. of a purpose, but it's a purpose which is supported by, by life itself, nature. I, yeah, I mean, my, one of my goals in life at this point is to fully understand form follows function. So you just actually, I think, move the needle forward quite uh, nicely. So I, I'll get it, I'll get it, I promise you that. Um, uh, and, I, and I think that that's, you know, it, that really uh, helps me understand principles a lot more as well. Um, the, the thing that uh, my key takeaways are is that the, I forget who had just said it, the idea of having a certain level of conciseness and being able to express our principles. And the reason why I think that that's so important is because that means we've really kind of thought about them. And you think about all the gyrations and things that go underneath there. And that's why stoic principles really mean are meaningful to me because that you can keep coming back to them and when you start to have various interactions and taxonomies and you can keep thinking about it but these four cardinal principles or uh, virtues that you can keep coming back and so it's a framework and you can start to see where the interactions of your daily life how this governs and that's what principles are they govern your daily life. You need to fall back on them. And if you don't, then you're going to have a contradiction, which actually is going to be problematic in your own purpose and your achieving your objectives. So to be able to uh, you know, state your principles concisely means that you've more than likely thought about them in great detail. And I think that that's you know, that's, that's the value that I, I, I took away. Um, that, and that being said, you know, uh, I believe it was um, Nick has, you know, given me a couple of things to really think about as well. So these are going to be one of the, this will be one of the videos that I do go back and watch um, primarily, you know, Nick's contributions as well as that form follows function. It's starting to resonate a little bit more. Um, so thank you. Wonderful. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Joe. Next up is uh, Brian. Okay. Um, when, when I first looked at the contents of this session, I, I I started to make a list, and having got down to about twenty, I thought, "Hang on a minute. This this is not principles. What I'm writing are ob objectives or ideas or whatever, but it's not principles as such." So I went back, and when we spoke, I narrowed it down to about three. Um, that I would actually regard as, as principles. I mean, it's strange because when I used to work um, with organizations, one of the tasks I often had was to help them define what their principles were. And they were never anything like their objectives or their tasks of the year. They're something separate and special. And you know, that's what I'd forgotten when I first started writing. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, again, I want to kind of um, second the power of explication Kind of having it in a sentence form, it allows you to think and apply it. Uh, I also am a very big fan of writing these things out, writing all your principles out because you can start to see patterns in them. You're, you can be more self-reflective about it. So more the level of explication, I think, makes a big difference. Um, all right. Does anybody else have any comments? We'll have the speakers from the next one coming in in about five minutes or so. So Kevin, what's your takeaway? Uh, I would share something different the, from Toeism, right? So the toe that can be spoken is not the eternal toe. Another thing is like the English the way, the toe that can be told is not a true toe. The toe that's meaning that's the way, uh, the past, that's meaning if you, uh, which mean you spirit it's like the, we need to learn and apply what you said. If they say, we have principle, if we see you know, it right down, or we a practice, we have our own principle. But every day, we still need learning and enhance it. Then a question, answer, 
then thinking question again is a healthy cycle to improve ourselves and uh, could be help others. So thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Kevin. Um, I think this again, this issue of the cycle. Um, so uh, the point that Joe was making uh, in his presentation about action, I think many people made the point, you know, kind of focus on action because principles are primarily to guide your action. And then the, the point again that keeps coming up is kind of using that feedback of action to kind of keep improving the principles, you know, and once you've done it for enough time, those become kind of solid, you know, they, they become kind of more, more and more reliable uh, through this kind of uh, relentless testing. All right, uh, does anybody else have any comments? All right, so let me go ahead and uh, say that this was a fantastic meetup. Uh, thank you so much. I'm very grateful. And um, uh, the meetup that is coming up uh, on uh, romanticism in aesthetics. Uh, this is a book called Romantic Manifesto by Ayn Rand. I recommend it very highly. My friends Rob and Sherry are going to be here and then Joya and Maritza are going to be here. All four of them are really powerful thinkers and they know this subject very well. Um, Rob and Sherry are you know, dear friends. So I've talked to them about these things for a long, long time. So I'm just going to, it's going to be a nice conversation. I miss them because I'm not able to go there for Thanksgiving. So this is my replacement for Thanksgiving. Uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, art and the power of art. What is art and what does it do for you? Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, we'll be starting shortly in about five minutes.